to say. Hi there, come on in. You don't have to bundle up because you can sit at home and watch this show, but we have to bundle up because we're going to tip up town USA on the waters of Houghton Lake, Michigan. Quite a winter carnival, their 41st annual. We're gonna be out there to catch Northern Pike on tip ups. We're also going to talk to a handicapped sportsman about keeping warm, a particular problem for disabled sportsmen. Then we're gonna go to Alaska and fish for king salmon, the thrill of my life. And then we warm up with afterglow chili. A full show, so stay tuned. I'm Fred Trost. It's time for the Outdoor Digest. Boy. Well, just let it go. <laughs> Reel it in later. Weekly telecast of Outdoor Digest is made possible through the cooperation of this and other public television stations nationwide. Weekly production of the Outdoor Digest television show is a function of Fred Trost's Outdoors Club, promoting public understanding of hunting and fishing, appreciation of wildlife, and enjoyment of our great outdoors. Over here on the south shore by the Tip-Up Town site, there's hundreds of cars, thousands of people, lots of activity, but there are some anglers who fish out here. Oh, look at this. By golly, we were all the way over in East Bay and they weren't catching anything. <laughs> well, this was his birthday? His birthday and he got his, his first big fish. No kidding. Yep. And he seems quite thrilled with it. He is. Well, you have yourself set up here with a couple of vehicles and shanties and four-wheeler and a snowmobile and the whole nine yards. How are you doing, Mama? Good. Doing real good. Having lots of fun. Are you catching any fish? Timmy caught the only one. That's it? <laughs> have you got any bites here? No. Nope. No bites. What are you using for bait? Minnows. Okay. And hoping... some maggots. <laughs> Hope... Wax. Wax worms. <laughs> hoping to get just about anything, though. Huh? Yeah, we'll take anything we can get. Have you uh, heard of anybody catching any good ones around no, here? No, uh-uh. Well, somebody right down a little bit farther caught a pike about the same size as ours. Okay. Well, we thought we'd go down on that part of the south shore and check. Kathy Meisner from Midland enjoys fishing, but the high point of the day for her was definitely that birthday pike for her son, Timmy, who's too little to partake in snowmobiling and four-wheeling, which thousands, probably tens of thousands of people enjoy on Houghton Lake and in the public forest land that surrounds the lake. Cameraman John Ford and I were trying out a new vehicle from Polaris, a six-wheeler that steers like a four-wheeler, but has six-wheel drive. There's no stopping it. The wide, soft tires are easy on the landscape, and both John and I, plus our camera gear, can pull up to a variety of what look like fishing hot spots. So you got one on? Oh, we do have a stringer coming. Well, tell me about it. What's happening on the other end? Oh, boy, I don't know. It's, it's, it's going under the ice, but... So you didn't do this just to draw a crowd? No, no, I was sleeping in the shanty, really. <laughs> <laughs> well, look at this. You guys got some... Got some great fish. Look at that stringer of pike. And that perch. Oh, look at that. Hold that up there like a trophy book thing, you know? Sideways. Yeah. Sideways. Yeah, hold it up sideways. You know. Oh, come on. There you go. Come on, Carl. Flip it a little There we go. 14 inches. 14 inches. So, what are we waiting for here? I don't know. I guess. Let's see what happens here. A moment of truth. Oh, oh. Well, Missed it. Oh. Nothing? Oh. Nothing! Took the medal! Yeah. Well, I don't know what you wanted. Stunk we got again. We have a dozen oh, people here. Yep. Camera's rolling. It's pretty embarrassing. Oh, yeah. 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 It's the way my life going all weekend. These are all tip up. We're just going to take them in. These are all tip up, Pike? Yep. Yep. Away and away and. Oh. Great. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, let's see that perch. That's Look it. at this story. A 14 incher? Yep, yep. I'm digging for it. Are you caught any other perch? Nope, that's the only one we got. Well, when you get them that size. Yep. Well, there's proof that Houghton Lake produces nice fish, but this past weekend we had to keep moving to find fishing action. As the crowd moves to the new flag. You got any motion there? Uh, a little slow right now. Definitely going that way, though. Now, is this the hole that produced some of those other pike? Well, this is the hole that has produced nothing yet. Oh, okay. <laughs> but this could be... This could be the one. Could be it. Right. 
No, he's slowed down right now. <laughs> you know, there is a chance this could be a 25 pounder. There is always that yeah. chance. Right. <laughs> right. Well, it was when we hooked it on. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> we might have lost a little now. Is that your middle bit and yeah, half? Full? No, no, that was the one that I tried sinking for a little bit of chum. I, I know uh, there's a bell that would take that middle. <laughs> right, right. How deep is it here? Uh, about eight foot. Well, there doesn't seem to be any action. No. Uh, well, the fun of tip-up fishing is the drama and the fact that working tip-ups can be a group activity. Lots of advice, lots of speculation, lots of fun. Another false alarm? Uh, not yet. You took quite a bit of line out, though. Okay. No. Well, he ran with it. I mean, he, he really yeah. took it out there. Yeah, he did. Yeah, clean oh, it off. Oh, oh. Cleaned it off again. Oh, wow. But over there, another flag pops. Looks like we're going to be the first ones to this flag. Whoa, we have one of these polar tip-ups. Let's see. I don't see it going around. This isn't moving. Is it going? No. Nope. No, there it, there it goes. We have some action to fish oh, on the other end. Is this your tip-up? Yes. <laughs> it is? Yep. It's her Great. Tip -up. What's your name? Sherry. Sherry? Go get it. Oh, it's going. Jerk. Go south, Jerk. Down, Sherry. You got one? Yep. Yeah. Come on. Super! Oh. Come on! Yay! <laughs> Outstanding! <laughs> By golly. Yeah. Oh, and he came off. Oh, he still has your uh, minnow here. Maybe we can retrieve it. Good boy, friend. Not worried about that. Still got your minnow there. Yeah. Yeah, I just set it down. I don't know. Do we need to measure it? Just put it right back. What? There goes. Huh? Yeah, you got the minnow out of there. It's still alive, Simco. Yeah. Got the minnow. Oh. A bleeding fish likely to die must be returned to the water if it's under 20 inches, a case where the law prevails over practicality and ethics. Okay, we hear 17, we are eight. Oh, three quarters. Oh, oh, we almost. Hold it, squeeze that tail together. No, no, we. No, no it won't no. go. No, my, my wife is a true sports person, and she'll release this. And back it goes. How about that? Well, congratulations anyway. We caught the pike on camera. Boy, I tell you what, her hands are slimy. There's no doubt about that. This is what we call camaraderie among sportsmen and sportswomen. The outdoors brings lots of people together. You can't tell where they're from, where they work, how much money they have or don't have. We're all bundled up from head to toe enjoying a common interest. In this case, fishing. Tip-up fishing and pan fishing through the ice. Sure, it's cold, but shared with friends, it can be a lot of fun. To thousands of people, this is what Tip-Up Town at Houghton Lake is all about. If you want to keep warm when you're out on the ice, or any time during the winter, the most important thing you can wear, believe it or not, is a hat, like a knit hat like this. Most of your body temperature that escapes into the air will go through the top of your head, well, especially the top of my head, if you're out in the cold. A hat can keep you warmer than any other single article of clothing. But there are some people who have particular difficulties keeping warm. Let's talk to one of those sportsmen right now. Alan Street has hunted and fished all his life until an accident on the job put him in a wheelchair for six months. Now he uses crutches and he's back outdoors. But for all the difficulties he's had with crutches in the snow, his biggest problem comes about when he's sitting still. What are the problems you have? Is it, is it mainly dangerous? Could you hurt yourself worse well, if you fell or what? Uh, I can't feel cold. I can't feel the heat. So if I'm out here on the ice, I've got to learn to... Uh, I feel the cold in my right foot, then I've got to get my left foot warmed up. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I can get frostbite pretty easy. Mm -hmm. it. Uh, other than that, though, slipping around and, you know, the coldness is what I've really got to worry about hmm. right now. So, yeah, most people would think it would be the worry of slipping and falling. Yeah, no, it's it's cold, too. You know, I I can sit out here for a couple hours and my left leg can get real cold and I don't even know mm -hmm. it. 
So I've got to watch, I've got to learn, like, if my right leg gets cold, I know my left leg is, is cold or, or colder because mm -hmm. I don't have the circulation in the leg. For people with disabilities like Alan's, as long as they can stay warm, they can enjoy hunting and fishing. Circulation and warmth. Major problems for a lot of us outdoors and ones we're always looking for ways to solve. Want to stay warm outdoors? Well, keep busy. Run over and check that ice fishing rod. Besides keeping busy, well, you have to eat right and wear warm clothes. See, we're warm-blooded. Fish aren't. A fish's body is the same temperature as the water it's in, which could be 36 or even 33 degrees, and it won't kill them. But our body temperatures can't tolerate dropping like that. 98.6 is where it's supposed to be, Fahrenheit. Now this fellow's wool outfit is ideal outdoor wear. Felt pack boots are warm and waterproof, but nothing keeps you warm ice fishing like success. Your heart pumps warm blood all over when you're excited. Well, I tell you, it's a, it's a nice one, whatever it is. Fishing success keeps you warm like a jog around the lake. And here's a perch that's worth getting excited about. Oh, look oh, at that. Beautiful. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Oh, wee. Look at that. <laughs> that is outstanding. Woo, wee. That's a great perch, but I'm also warm because I'm keeping my gloves on. Grabbing onto a cold fish could slow down the circulation in my hands, then I'd be miserable. The idea is to conserve our body heat, keep it inside our clothes. You can lose 35% of your body heat by not wearing a hat in cold weather. And it's not always practical to wear gloves. You know, you can't thread an ice fishing line through the guides or get the line untangled like I'm going to spend quite a while doing here in just a minute. But it's not a good idea to set your gloves on the ice like I do because if they get wet, you'll be colder than ever. The real culprit when it comes to hypothermia is water, getting wet, and wind. You don't have to be in snow like this to suffer from hypothermia. Most hypothermia deaths, believe it or not, occur in temperatures between 30 and 50 degrees. What happens is, if you get wet or you're not wearing gloves or a hat for an extended period of time, your body doesn't circulate that blood that gets cold, so your fingers or your toes stay cold. If they're frostbitten, well, they freeze, and they must be thawed out gently. But you can develop hypothermia where your whole body loses heat without becoming frostbitten. You'll get numb, you'll shiver, you'll lose your memory. Now, these are signs you should bundle up and get warm quickly because you're losing inner body heat. People with poor circulation, particularly seniors or people who have had strokes, Paralysis or amputation are very susceptible to frostbite or hypothermia, but they have to keep their feet and hands and ears and heads covered to protect their health. But you should too. Get those gloves back on when you're done. Stay dry. It's not only more healthy, but you'll be more comfortable. And both are necessary if you're going to enjoy the outdoors forever. Those are about the toughest conditions of all for a handicap or disabled sportsman when you have that bitter cold out ice fishing, but there are ways, many ways, that sportsmen can surmount those difficulties. We'll show you some more in future editions of Outdoor Digest. Right now, let's head up to some conditions that, well, we had some rain and there was a little adversity and there was a difficulty of catching a huge king salmon. You're gonna love it, so stay tuned as we go to Alaska. It's July in Alaska. The snow has melted off the mountaintops, but these glaciers survive summer heat as they will for hundreds of years. Gary Pogany's Osprey Island Lodge is our destination. In the background, you see Lake Iliamna, Alaska's largest inland lake. We're headed for the scenic Lake Clark, turquoise waters surrounded by mountains 150 miles west of Anchorage, accessible only by air. The lodge is rustic looking, but the meals and hospitality are elegant. Gary and Louise host a maximum of eight people at one time because all traveling up here is done by airplane, and their two float planes can carry a total of eight anglers. Cameraman John Ford and I flew into Lake Clark at noon on Sunday, had a quick lunch, and Gary whisked us north, so by 2 o'clock we were boarding one of his boats he keeps stashed on the Mulchatna River. Gary's son Steve is learning the ropes of the outfitting business and he tended the motor during the next two hours when we hope to catch a king salmon or two. 
Gary provides all the fishing tackle because each day we fish for different species, usually requiring different rods and reels. At the end of the heavy line on the king salmon rod, we put a gob of spawn on a big treble hook, a big gob because we're going for big fish. To take advantage of the strong current in the Mulchatna River, oaky drifters are used to attract the salmon. The propellers spin in the current, probably sending out vibrations as well. I haven't seen that many oaky drifters used in Michigan rivers, but in the right stretch of river, I've got to think it could be a real killer in the fall. The breakaway lead sinker is held by surgical tubing hanging from a three-way swivel, and the technique, well, it's a common one, drifting. Nothing unusual about the drift. We run upstream ahead of the holes, float free downstream, letting that oaky drifter and the spawn do its work among the salmon. Yeah, let's see, he pretty much hogged the whole fishing spot there. Uh, <laughs> just let it, just let it yeah. Well, I had a lot of fun joking with Gary and Steve. They're originally from Milan, Michigan, so they remember the salmon heydays back in the 70s. Okay, now my rod tip, now it's bouncing. Yeah. And it should be bouncing constantly? Constantly on the bottom, you want it, you want it on the bottom at all times and that drifter will float up a couple feet off the bottom. And uh, you're feeling kind of a, of a harder strike. You know, give it, give, it the, give it a good set. They got that hard mouth. Well, I'm gonna have this, this thing flying out of the water about every 10 seconds then. The salmon were thick in this river, which drains into Bristol Bay, one of Alaska's chief salmon-producing waters. They'd bump the line frequently, and it didn't take long to get a hookup. Oh, there he goes. <laughs> He's in spawning colors. Yeah. Real, 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 real. Okay, let him out. There he comes. Oh, that red color. This is just like uh, in National Geographic. You can turn the net him already? If we can get him close enough? Yeah, get him close enough. Okay, I think I can bring him in here. Don't, don't horse him. Don't play him. Let's see the net going on. Oh, action like this right off the bat seemed unreal. Okay, here's. He's. You ready? Oh, oh, oh look at that. Oh, man. Oh, knock me out. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> what a thrill. Go what 30. A, 30 pounds? Oh, man, I haven't seen a salmon this size in. A long time. In the Great Lakes, limit catches of kings like this were common in the 70s and early 80s. Fish up to 35 pounds weren't unusual, but for unexplained reasons, the number of salmon in the Great Lakes has declined in recent years, which made this catch reminiscent of those Great Lakes heydays. Oh, oh, oh. oh do I love this. Do I love this. In the next hour or so, we boated three king salmon this size, and just before a rain squall, the big one hit. Boy. Well, just let it go. <laughs> let it go. Reel it in later. <laughs> Looks like I've been eating pistachio nuts <laughs> from that spawn. No, actually, you know, it isn't too bad not having uh, rain gear with wool. Could be the best thing I'm. Yeah, could be the best thing I'm wearing. Denim jacket would be bad. Of course, I don't know who would wear a denim jacket. <laughs> in a fishing trip in Alaska, right? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> Anybody who's been here any amount of time, of course, wouldn't. No, no he didn't. Oh, okay. For crying out loud, all these experts. Well, I just like the pole. They're wearing denim jackets and calling the shots. I got Gore-Tex on here. I think. Mm-hmm. The pitter-patter of big, cold raindrops didn't dampen my enthusiasm. Oh, there we go. Wow, that's a big one. Yeah, yeah. that is a good one. 
Get him up there where we can see him. Well, this was definitely the biggest of our four. Its pink body in the water looked nearly four feet long. And he should be up here. Cold raindrops? What cold raindrops? Look at this fish. It's bigger than all the above. Is it? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yes. This goes 40. Y'all oh. beat it any team? No. <laughs> Come on, that's a dandy. Oh. 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 Easy. Easy. Keep playing. Oh. You got to hang on. I'm at the back the boat out. Oh, back the boat out. Now hold it, Steve. I got it right up here. Well, you're going to hit shore. That's where all the snags are. Let me get the motor. Here we go. I should be able to bring him up if you can get him. Can you get him here? No. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. Look at that! Oh! Congratulations! Oh! That's a hole. Oh! Look at the size of that! Oh, man! That's a great one. Oh, that's... That's a beauty. Very, Congratulations. This is incredible. <laughs> yeah, this that's is an amazing incredible. Fish. Oh, about that's uh, so, an hour, oh. hour and a half of fishing. That isn't too bad. No, oh, that isn't. Oh, man. Let's go get some rain gear. Oh, get some rain gear? <laughs> you guys, I want to fish. <laughs> no way. <laughs> Well, this was an incredible hour and a half. The setting reminded me of Michigan, except for the mountains and except for the phenomenal number of big king salmon that seemed to be terribly easy to catch. Oh, oh let me tell you, this is no lightweight. This is at least, no, this is heavier than those bags of salt, uh, water softener <laughs> salt that I carry from the grocery store. Oh. I gotta get farther back. Okay. Uh, can you get it in the picture? Yep, there you go. Isn't this something? Really? Oh, doesn't get any beauty. better than this, does it? How much do you think this weighs? 45, 45, 50. 45, 50, yeah. Oh. yeah. On the wall. Well, I couldn't wait to show all you folks back home that I don't always bring bad luck to every fishing spot I visit. Oh, this feels good. Well, here's that oaky drifter. Every time we go someplace new to fish or hunt, we learn new techniques. And this is one I'm gonna bring back to the Great Lakes and use a little more frequently, see if we can't pull some big king salmon out of our uh, pretty productive fishing waters this year. You know, speaking of keeping warm, like we did earlier, the importance of wearing a hat and different clothing, Kathy Beitler has another way to keep warm and she has the ultimate recipe to do it. Al Demansky sent us a recipe for very warm chili, and it's called Afterglow Chili. Yeah, Big Al, he works for Big John up there in Traverse City. Right. And we're going to start out with lean venison burger. Oh, that sounds good. Of course, a, a venison chili recipe, you really oftentimes can't taste the venison that much. Right. I, I have a feeling, especially in this one. <laughs> yeah, I think it's going to be hidden quite well. I'm just going to go ahead and brown the burger and then add green pepper and celery and onions. Celery, that's interesting. You, in this past year, we've had several recipes that have put celery in what I'd consider to be unlikely dishes. Right. Right there in yep, the chili. in chili. And then, uh, like I say, this uh, has got a lot of warm ingredients to it. I'm going to add clamato juice. Clamato. <laughs> I have to told you that ten times. I know. Clamato juice is how it's pronounced. You want to try it? I think so. Clamato. I like tomato. Two, <laughs> two kinds of beans and then jalapenos. And like I said, this is just the beginning of the warmness in this recipe because then we're going to add some spices of coriander, crushed red pepper, hmm. uh, cumin, and red hot pepper sauce. And you can make this just as hot as you want it or back off a little bit if you don't want it quite as spicy. I'm sure that Bob Garner's comments will relate not only to the culinary aspects but also this chili's after effects. It's an excellent recipe. But like we were talking about airports a little earlier here before, now let me tell you something. You better have your dining room foamed down because there could be a crash landing around. This, this stuff is hot. Yes, it is. Yeah, I imagine some people will be going for the milk and everything else to yes. try to, to wash it down. Hey, you want crackers around within easy reach, too. Yeah, but it isn't hot like um like chili sauce or anything in it. I don't or, think so, huh? No, like cayenne pepper. 
Is it? Yes, got both of those in here. Well, and I, I think it's extremely warm. I tell you what, I put jalapeno peppers on everything. I mean, pizza and spaghetti. <laughs> That's and, why. You know. Yeah. So <laughs> I put it. I think it's perfect. Yeah. Well, you're all broken in, but this is one of these recipes you've got to kind of stick around and see what happens tomorrow with. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I like it. It's good. I give it especially in the winter like this. Mm -hmm. It's great. The great thing about chili is you can make it hot or you can make it not. Use venison or hamburger. Don't be afraid to monkey with the ingredients to suit your taste. Afterglow chili. It's in the January-February issue of the Outdoor Digest magazine, packed with articles. Relive those ice fishing tales. A fishing trip where you can catch 40-pound king salmon. See how white-tailed deer react to decoys. The baking soda scam and controversies broiling in the Michigan DNR. All the January-February recipes and entry form for Williams Gunsight Hunting or our Moosehead Fishing Awards with a full-color trophy book. For a sample copy and information on joining the Outdoors Club, write to me at Box 1000, Bath, Michigan, 48808. Ask for the January-February Outdoor Digest. Oh, what an exhausting show. Ice fishing out on a frozen lake and then reeling in a big king salmon. Oh, man, I tell you, this job is really tough. But I'm going to stick with it. I'm going to be back next week right here, and I hope you can get outdoors this weekend. It's a great place to be. See you next week. Weekly telecast of Outdoor Digest is made possible through the cooperation of this and other public television stations nationwide. Weekly production of the Outdoor Digest television show is a function of Fred Trost's Outdoors Club, promoting public understanding of hunting and fishing, appreciation of wildlife, and enjoyment of our great outdoors. Oh, that's a whoa! Oh, look at this! <laughs> oh man, that's a great one. Oh, that's that's a beauty. Congratulations! This is incredible. <laughs> yeah, this that's is an amazing incredible. Fish. Oh, about uh, an hour, oh. hour and a half of fishing, that isn't too bad. No, oh, that isn't. Oh, man. Let's go get some rain gear. Oh, get some rain gear? Oh, you guys, I want to fish. <laughs> no way.